Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for joining me. So we're going to do something fun again today. I'm outside. I got the plastic down and I think you guys are going to like this. So I have a beautiful green palette mixed up here. Um, I'll show you the colors and give you their names really quick. Now these are all mixed or thinned down with American Floetrol until they flow off the stick, just like so. Um, what I usually do is I will put about, you know, for an eight ounce cup, you know, maybe uh, two tablespoons worth of paint, fill it up halfway with American Floetrol and then thin it the rest of the way with the water, okay? There is no exact measurement really. You just want it to flow off the stick and if you're doing something like I'm doing today where you want the paint to really move a lot, the thinner the better. You don't want it as thin as water, but you know, you can see here this is, well, let me use a better color here. This leaves a trace on the surface, but disappears really fast. I'm not even sure you can see that. Let me try on this color here. So, See how that's disappearing pretty, pretty quick? And I apologize about the sun. Obviously, there's nothing I can do about that. So, I have here this beautiful sage green color is from Joe Sonia. It's called Tingles Pond. Then I also have Deco Arts 24 Karat Gold. I have Deep Pond Joe Sonia. I also have Liquitex uh, Deep, Green Deep, Permanent. Then I have two of the black lines from Atelier. I have the blue black and I have their green black, which is a really, really dark, dark green, almost black. <laughs> then I have two of our Tessa Pearl colors. They are called Pearl Gold Green. And what's this one here? pearl dark green and those are right here that's that one and then I believe this one here which is really not dark green once you mix it is it it's more of a sage a metallic sage all right my white I'm using is artist loft soft body level one and again that is mixed with American flow trawl flows off the stick Leaves a little mound. I'm sorry, I am blinded by the light right now. So here's my idea. I got a big old canvas. I'm gonna throw it on the table again. I'm gonna coat the canvas in the white paint. I'm gonna do a big puddle of the colors, just stack them on top of each other, maybe multiple puddles. And then I'm coming in with my plastic machete and we're gonna fling this sucker across the canvas and then we're gonna get the blow dryer out and see what we can make all right this I got it the Dollar Tree it's a kid's toy that I broke the handle off of and it really flings paint so hopefully I have the plastic out far enough if not my husband will be ripping my head off tonight but I'm used to it so it's okay all right, so as I said, I'm going to flood the canvas first. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to dump my paint on there, tilt it around, blow it around if I have to, just to get the job done. So we'll try that much first. And if we need more, we'll add more. Now this is a 22 by 28 canvas. So it's a big boy. Nothing to bat your eyes at, or turn your nose at, I should say. Bat your eyes. Oh, Tammy. I'm definitely gonna need more paint, so I'm just gonna put it down now to make my life easier. So a really big question I get asked a lot is how much paint do you leave on the canvas? There is no depth after you're done tilting. It's almost, think of it this way, if you paint your wall, you just have a thin layer of paint on it. That's all you want on this canvas is a thin layer of paint. So what I do is I pour it on, I tilt it all around, and then when I get towards the end and the canvas is all coated, I'll just keep it tilted 
take it big pools of paint off and then level it out. So it's a really nice thin layer of paint. Okay, so I got the light done. I'm gonna torch really quick if I can because of the wind. And I kind of have to um, work fast here because we're out in the hot sun. So we don't want our base coat dry. So here we go, my friends. Let's do this, shall we? So let's start off with the blue black we'll put down first. Like I said, we're just going to put a puddle of paint and go with it. Don't know what that was. <laughs> uh, permanent green, deep or deep green. We want to make sure we sandwich our gold in between somewhere so it creates a nice lacing and cells for us. This is not going to be a good situation. I'm telling you right now, it's a lot of paint and it's going to go flying. So I'm going to have to be careful with that flicker oh I'm so scared no what the hell you only live once right you only live once so I believe this is the last color I may have used this color already I don't know It's there. That's a big puddle of paint. Well, I am begging for trouble. Begging for trouble. All right, guys. Hold on, I'm gonna stop for a second here. Let this wind calm down so the camera stops shaking. Especially for this part. All right, you ready? Here we go. All right, that's pretty straight. That was fun. Let's watch it again. Now let's see it in reverse. One more time. go that's pretty short <laughs> loving this right here wow all right let's see ah. oh my goodness I got the deck I got the deck Talk about getting nowhere fast. And I just know this one is gonna like work fine and it's gonna get all over the place. All right, so let me stop there doing that. Let me add a little paint to see if I could create something out of this. Let me give you a close-up of that. I love this part. Yeah, let me let me play around with it now.
So what I'm simply doing is taking the blow dryer and just blending the colors together all down to the edge of the canvas. I'm not trying to create a Dutch pour shape or anything like that. I'm just taking the paint and blending it with the blow dryer. I, uh, when I was blowing this around, I decided to kind of fill up most of the canvas and just leave one quarter of the canvas white to kind of make it look like the, the paint is splashing up to the left corner. And you'll see that here in a minute. So I'm just taking my time and blending the paint. Now, the only problem with doing this outside in the heat is the paint starts to thicken up. And because of that, I had to put the blow dryer on high to get the paint to move. But it's okay. I got through it. I was still able to move it. I probably should have made the paints a little bit thinner, but I was worried about the metallic colors and the pearl colors cracking up from too much water. So um, I decided to leave them at that consistency. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some paint on this side only and try to get this going up like this for the design. I apologize. I thought I hit record when I put those first two colors down, then took a look at the camera and said, oh, no, I didn't. It was just so sunny out. I couldn't see the screen. But anyway, it's the same colors I used before, and I'm just making a puddle there, and we're going to fill up that whole uh, upper left corner with these colors here. Now I will say, although some of this canvas, like right to the left of that puddle, it looks very washed out the color. It's not, it's because of the sun shining down. So when I do the close up, you're going to see how vibrant these colors really are. And, um, I ended up losing my favorite part there, my first paint flick, but yeah, it, it was just so hot out there. I didn't want to take the time to kind of play around with it and try to avoid it. I just decided to keep blowing that paint around because it was getting really thick at this point, as you can see. So I finished doing this part here and then I was done with the piece. However, I just, I'm having a great time just kind of going back to the roots of acrylic pouring and having some fun with it, not worrying about pigments or bloom technique or, or anything like that. Dutch pour, you know, I, I just want to have some fun with the paint and enjoy it. And I think a lot of us put pressure on ourselves to create something that other people are creating and you don't have to. Okay. You can be unique and design your own piece of art. Like when this one dries, I'm not going to be done with this. I'm going to do some embellishing, which I will show you when I do that. You know, I'm going to have some real fun with, with this painting. And I just implore you as the artist to also try, you know, enjoying it. Don't concentrate so much on the shape or the composition just have some fun with the paint. I find that when you do something like acrylic pouring and you don't put pressure on yourself and you just kind of wing it, the outcome is nine times out of 10 better than when you actually try. So just have some fun with it. All right. So you know what? I like that with a little bit of negative space there in the corner. It's really, really pretty. So let me give you a close up here and thank you for joining me today. Don't forget, I release a new video every Wednesday and Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check out the description for all of the information on my channel and products I use, discounts, uh, the Fluid Art Escape that is happening in charlotte north carolina this upcoming february check out the information for that in the in the description and if you're interested in information on it all you have to do is email fluidartescape at gmail.com 
uh, just in the subject title, put inquiry for Charlotte, North Carolina class, and we will get all that information to you, such as pricing and dates and all that. Another big announcement. In the upcoming new year, Canella and I will be coming to California, baby. And we are really, really excited to start planning that. So for those of you that want us in, in California, we are coming. What part of California? It'll probably be somewhere central so that, you know, everybody can get to it. Um, but uh, we'll have more information on that. Just make sure you're subscribed to our channels and the notification bell is on. And we will have information for that coming up in the near future. Uh, if you would be so kind to subscribe, if you are not, I would appreciate it. It helps my channel a lot. Helps my channel be noticed and therefore I can teach more people. And uh, also follow me on social media. I'm on all types of social media platforms, even though I resist and resist them. I'm just, <laughs> I'm not a tech girl and, you know, I like face-to-face -face interaction versus social, but I am on TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and we have a Facebook group that you can share your artwork with us in. So if you flick paint, I want to see it. Join United We Pour Fluid Art Group and show me your worth. I love you all, and until the next one, happy pouring.